trade. Why do people trade at all? To answer this question, I will talk about absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Imagine there are two people, person A and person B. They produce product, one product and another product at a different ratio. One person is uh, faster at producing product X, the other person is faster at producing product I, Y. Uh, suppose this is the productivity to make, uh, to make things in one day. Now if they would split um, their time in half and both produce both product X and product Y in one day, the numbers would go uh, would drop in half. Person A would produce three and two, and person B would produce two and three. Um, but there seems a smarter way of going about things. That is, for both to produce what they are best at, and produce none of the other, and then to engage in trade, and split uh, their, their production in half, uh, at a, and trade at a ratio of one product for one product, and then they, end up, they both end up with three products of both items. If we compare this with the situation where they don't trade, we see that both persons A and B are better off compared to if they wouldn't trade. Now let's make the example a little bit more difficult, a little bit more complex. Suppose person A is better at producing both products X and Y. Now if they would split their uh, day in half and produce both products themselves, this is what that would look like. Now let's see uh, what would happen if they both traded, if they both produced what they are best at, and if then they would engage in trade. So person A produces sec 6 of X, and person B produces 2 of Y, then they engage in trade. For every 1x, uh, person A um, get, uh, gets from person B 1y, and vice versa. So now person B with one trade has 1y and 1x, which is better than he would have had um, if he had produced all by himself. But um, person A still has a lot of X products. So he can do the same trade with another person. Same situation, person C gets uh, one X and he traded in one Y. And now person A has four X left and two Y. And then he makes another trade with a third person, person D. And now person D2 has 1 and 1, and now person A has 3 and 3, because he traded in another X for a Y. And now if, if we compare this uh, situation with no trading, we see that both person A and person B and C and D are all better off. Person A has 3Y, whereas he would otherwise have 2Y, and person B and C and D all have one of both instead of half and one. Now let's change the situation again, where person B makes two X in a day and one Y in a day. That looks like this. Because now it's a little less obvious well, what, what we should do. Um, if they split their energy in half again, for the different products, this is what we get. 6 becomes 3, 4 becomes 2, 2 becomes 1, 1 becomes a half. Now, they should both produce what they are best at comparatively. That is to say, 
person A is four times better at producing Y and only three times better at producing X. This means person A should produce Y and person B should produce 2, where his disadvantage is the smallest. Then we engage in a trade. For example, for every um, X that person A gets, he gives up 2 thirds of Y. So uh, he gets 1 after 1 trade and he loses two-thirds of his four, which leaves him with, with three one-third. And person B has one X remaining, has gained two-third of Y. And again, we engage with the same trade with a, thir with a third person. Now person A uh, has two X, and he only has two and two-thirds of Y left. Person C is the same as person B. And a third trade with a fourth person. Now person A has 3x and 2y remaining. Uh, if we compare this with the situation of no trade, it's the same. But all persons B, C and D all are better off. But you can see that they are better off by a certain margin. Two thirds is larger than a half. Now if uh, B, C and D would have traded, uh, would have gained only half a Y for every one X that they gave up, then they would be in the uh, same situation as, as they would be if they hadn't traded. So that wouldn't be beneficial to them. Um, but uh, so if, if they trade at a price between half and two thirds, then both, then all four people are better off because then person A has gained more than 3x and person B, C and D has gained more than 0.5 of y. So the price has to go either a little bit above half for every 1x or a little bit below 2 thirds of y for every 1x. Increasing productivity. As you saw in the examples, more, being more productive means having more wealth. For First of all, you have more wealth because you have generated more wealth of your own, but you're also left with more wealth to trade with other people. So we saw that person A was constantly in a good situation. Uh, being more productive is one way uh, to gain more wealth. Another way is to produce higher quality products or products that are more rare. Because those, for those products, people may be willing to give up more things for it. In, in a sense, you can get a better price on them. The way this happens is uh, the way getting a higher productivity happens is as you focus on one specialty you get more experience and knowledge about the subject. You avoid overhead time. In the example we used half and half to divide up the time and calculated half the productivity with it. In practice this is not attainable. For example if your products are fish from the sea and apples from the woods and you have to walk an hour to the sea and back and an hour to the forest and back then you cannot attain your maximum hourly productivity because if your day was only four hours long all you could have done is walking whereas if you had done only one of the tasks you would have had some fish or some apples Savings and investment. If you save, which means that you don't consume all that you produce, then you can use those resources to buy new, new tools or consume those resources as you build your own production technology. All of this overcomes the cost 
uh, that trading brings with it as well. Now uh, let's think about the real world. People specialize and the productivity shoots up as people dedicate their whole career on a specialty or on a focused number of skills. So for example, um, the productivity people have isn't that closely uh, as we had in the previous examples, but even then it was still beneficial to trade. But as people specialize more and more, this advantage becomes much more pronounced. So for example, uh, one person specializes completely in cooking, another person specializes in management, or somebody specializes in tennis, or somebody specializes in singing. You can see that um, someone who is a cook and owns his own restaurant could also make his living in management, but uh, the combination of those skills plus cooking gives him the highest productivity. Another person may be good uh, at management, also has some skills uh, for cooking, and he may even give somebody some tennis lessons because he, uh, he is a little bit of an athlete, but in management his skills are the most pronounced. Or take Roger Federer for example, he, can, he wins a lot of money playing tennis, his daily productivity is very high, he has specialized his whole life in that. He may also be a cook with which he could earn a living, but instead he chooses to make all his money playing tennis and then use those gains he has to acquire other people's services in other areas. Same thing may be true for a singer uh, who um, can earn a lot of money in the night. This is a ballpark figure, I really don't know. He may also be a decent cook, but he specializes in singing. Um, maybe Roger Federer earns more because he can play more tournaments. It's not quite clear, uh, but you see how people specialize and divide up their time. Also, you don't need to uh, work every single day, uh, particularly when your productivity is very high. You can use that, that income to have more leisure time on other on other days. So people produce almost entirely for the consumption of others. The exercise is to look at the market and predict what people will value and to produce it. <laughs>